Hello, my name's Jason and welcome to another episode of Me Painting. Uh, once again, we're using the Artisan Water Mixable Oils. They've become my favourite paints, only because uh, the medium I use is water. <laughs> um, and I'm using a board that I've put some gesso on. It's just a, uh, a bit of MDF and uh, put some, uh, I used a mixture of black and white gesso to make my grey gesso. And uh, we'll use that to do our painting on today. And I'm gonna do a bit of a sunset painting. So I'll get some of this red. I want some red touch of yellow. I might get a bit of crimson in there actually. And we'll, we'll just get straight into this one. Straight into it. I've got a reference picture but I've got to ask myself questions. <laughs> First question is how red do I want this? Do I want this redder than that? Do I want to really express warmth? And therefore, I really need to go red. So let's um, say our horizon line's about there. This is where our horizon is. And we'll start putting paint on. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite strong, this red is. This is a, a bit of red and cadmium red and alizarin crimson and a bit of yellow it makes quite a nice colour actually I'm sort of going to uh, have it going off a bit there and uh, over here so if you're wondering what's the difference between painting on board to painting on a canvas, it's the uh, the surface is um, feels different. Like the canvas sort of pulls your paint a little bit, where the uh, the board it slides a little bit more. Well, they both work. Just depends what you've got, really. Just use what you've got. I just uh, came across some boards that I'd bought a while ago, and I thought, oh, they'll do. They'll do for a picture. So I've got that red in, and areas I kind of will dull down a bit, like these areas here. And I can choose either to use black or brown. Um, but I'll do that later. I won't do that yet. Get some of this orange. Just using my dirty brush and going into the yellow and make a nice orangey colour. We can start thinking about other areas of the sky. Throw in areas. So what I usually do um, with reference, I've said this before. I use my reference as a guide only now, um, mostly. If unless you're doing a commission where they want a certain picture doing, then uh, well, you've got to do that, but. If you're just painting for fun, painting to experiment, or painting for yourself, then uh, I prefer using uh, my uh, reference pictures as a guide. And uh, then it doesn't stop me from being creative then. Because I find if I'm, I'm just going to copy an image, then uh, it takes away my creativity because I'll be just copying the image and I, I want to uh, try and harness that creativity at times so 
this is just a way that I find works good for me because then I've got I've got something to base an idea on turn my blank canvas into something that look, resembles um, the image but also I don't stop myself from those creative moments <laughs> Sort of looking, looking, and seeing where I can put some colour. Just sort of building it up, and it's quite good having this. I mean, I've gone for a grey gesso this time. It's quite good having the grey because then uh, I can see my colour straight away, and I can uh, I can develop it. And also, I quite like um, the grey uh, showing through in places because it, it can darken the sky and without me really doing anything, <laughs> just by uh, allowing the paint to get a little bit transparent. Just for I need to put something behind this to stop it from knocking. <laughs> I'll put a little bit of paper behind it. Usually uh, fold some masking tape and stick it behind. But I forgot. <laughs> and also, I don't know where my masking tape is. I'll get a bit more paint. A bit more crimson. I do like crimson. It's such a nice colour. It's sort of a colour. Looks like it could be tasty. <laughs> well, that's made things worse. Not sure how loud this is sounding. <laughs> I've got some headphones on. It sounds well loud. Like I'm, uh, as I'm painting, a huge door slamming each time. That's a bit better. Or is it? I don't know. I should have really worked this out before I started filming. <laughs> oh well, you know me. No cuts. Show you it all. <laughs> Including me messing around. Doing this. Ah. Ah, yes. Yes. That feels good. <laughs> uh, it's good to be right. Okay, now we've got it right, the whole thing's moving. So it's almost like it's a roller coaster while we're painting. Adds an extra challenge.
It's not too bad. It's not as loud as I thought it was. Okay, here we go. I'm just um, looking at the picture and then I'm, I'm coming up and I'm using angles for the sky. I'm uh, trying not to uh, uh, be too strict with myself. I'm trying to keep the activity, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm trying to keep activity in the sky. I don't want to uh, allow it to, if I blend this all together, it's going to look a bit boring. So I'm trying to keep the activity going in the strokes. Oh, that's a bit bright. That's all right though, because we want the sun to be here, don't we? How big do we want it? This big? Or is that too big? this big. So something else that I'm not doing is I'm not really using that much pressure on my brush. I, I don't press down with my brush. I'm, I'm lightly uh, going across because you don't really need to. You don't need to uh, beat the devil out of the uh, canvas. <laughs> I'm sure you all got that reference. So, <clears throat> I'm going to wipe my brush, by the way. I'm going to wipe it. I'm going to use this brush, I think, all the way through. <laughs> I just want to clean it a little bit. So recently I've been uh, looking at a lot of fantasy paintings and books and stuff and uh, getting some ideas and uh, I'm working out when, when I'm looking at books of uh, other people's work admiring people's paintings and things I always think to myself well they're way better than me <laughs> how can I get as good as that and uh, and, I, and I was thinking well if I get myself a sketchbook which I, I have got one um, but to what I want to improve on is my people uh, I want to be able to paint people in my pictures and I want to be able to do it easy. <laughs> so what I need to do um, is, well, I need to practice doing people. So I'm going to get a sketchbook. I'm going to use it just for sketching people in. I'll use like Paul's movies or get out there in the real world and in the real world <laughs> and uh, sketch some people that I see. It could be like one of those artists that hides in a cafe and incognito paint people. <laughs> I mean sketch people. I have done that a few times actually. I, uh, I did it more for people's faces than uh, anything else before. Because that's what I wanted to capture. I wanted to capture someone's face. Now I want to uh, paint the whole, them as a whole. 
and they put the whole person into a picture, not just their face. Okay, that's about right for my shape, anyway. And then what I'm going to do is even grab some of this yellowy orange. along the bottom I'll do some of that crimson yeah and then just wipe the brush a bit more of this yellow There'll be more yellow there than there. Grab some white. Yeah. Now I need some more of this. Because we need to uh, brighten this up. I might use another brush actually. Which I'm loading my brush, lots of paint on it. And put loads of paint on there. One way of doing this. Probably a better way. Oh, there's, there's no definite way. <laughs> but maybe um, it'd be a good idea to draw in your uh, light area first and then uh, don't paint it and then you can wipe it or something and then you can put your, your lighter colour in. And then... You don't have to pile the paint up a bit like this. Although I do like piling paint on. <laughs> Kind of fun. And I can always use my uh, big motorbike going past. I could always use one of my uh, soft brushes just to blend it. Yeah, that'll do. I won't go crazy. Let's use the soft brush. Let's just use the soft brush. Just softly. Whispering. <laughs> Quietly. Just going over. Smooth. Soft. Yeah, I'm going to soften this area a bit more. Hmm. Nice and soft, nice and quiet. Because we're out here watching, we're, we're watching the sun. Maybe we're watching the uh, sunrise. And uh, we want to capture it on canvas. We don't want to be too loud. Because we don't want to spoil it. <laughs> we don't want to spoil the moment. Okay, let's uh, 
quite like the effect that the, uh, the soft brush has given the uh, picture actually. I might do that all over it. Hmm. I bet you yeah, were thinking when you're watching this, why doesn't Jason practice his picture before he puts them up? <laughs> it's like he just sets his camera up and starts painting. Well, that is what I do. <laughs> I just come up with an idea, I'll get a picture um, from a website or one that I've taken or something that I've seen and just paint it. Just go for it. The reason I like doing it like that is because uh, it's more real for you. If I... Uh, practice doing a painting and then come on here and paint it I mean sometimes it has been like that because I've messed a picture up or something and I've had to uh, redo it but I want to try and make it as close to reality for you uh, when you're watching it to how how, how it happens or what happens yeah we've got a tree we've got a tree here so what I want to do now I'm thinking uh, as we go up to the top Not sure if these pieces of paper are actually doing it. Let me put some uh, colour in here. Get some crimson. Now I I have a tendency to use small brushes these days. <laughs> So I'm being strict with myself at the moment to try and use this brush to get some colour thrown on so I don't land myself into trouble spending uh, my usual hours filling in an area with a one hair brush. <laughs> See that little these little actions. Sometimes, you know, use a brush that way. Flat. Just throw in an area. Or spin it. Spin the brush. Change things up. Spin. Splodge. And then <coughs> you can go in with your blender and you can blend this. And these splodges and things that you've thrown in, you can blend them out and it creates something in the sky, something different. Something a little bit magical, I guess. That's why I'm trying to add in my pictures now. I'm trying to add a bit of magic. Going through my fantasy painting stage, I think. I go through different stages. I go through like... Uh, Sometimes I think, oh, I just really want to do realism and uh, I'll start painting. Well, you've seen a couple where I just paint a spoon <laughs> or uh, a jug. Yeah. I'll just start painting just random items and I'll start drawing random stuff. And 
and try and make it look exactly like what I've seen and uh, and I really enjoy it and then sometimes I just want to throw paint on I just want to uh, try and express paint try and do something do something I've never done before paint something I've never painted before try and really get into it forget about what's going on outside forget about what's on the news what's on TV what films you want to see you have to leave that leave that behind and just dive into your painting and really really go for it because if you think the uh, the old masters they wouldn't have as many um, other things to keep them occupied they wouldn't have had TV or movies they wouldn't be playing music they would be focused be right in there not that I'm saying any of that's bad because I do all of that <laughs> Wait. <laughs> no, I actually do. I was just thinking, I don't watch films while I'm painting. But yeah, I actually have. I get like um, documentaries on and uh, I do like to watch some films while I'm painting. Sort of listen to them and then uh, glance now and then. Recently, uh, I was watching a series of documentaries which were rather shocking and uh, I won't talk about it. <laughs> right. All right, we've got black here. Ivory, ivory black. And uh, what I'm going to do is put some on this brush <laughs> and uh, this is going to be a horizon. So I was just thinking to myself that horizon's higher than I was originally going to do. So it makes me think maybe I should add colour into it and then go darker to make distance. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. You could do that though. If you're doing, thinking of doing a painting like this, and you're thinking, oh, I want to make it a little bit more, you know. Jason missed a trick there. He could have made it, he could have had more distance to his picture. Whoa. <clears throat> and if you think, well, you want to, then you could do that. You could get a little darker. Maybe a little brown in with your red and you could put some trees a little far away or something. You've just got to think the further away they are, the more of the sky colour you put in. Oops. This isn't working. I put something up to try and stop my uh, light reflecting onto the palette, but it ain't worked. Okay, so what do we do now? We've blocked in our black. We've got a nice, pretty active sky. I quite like it actually. It's everything I dreamed of. <laughs> Just getting some. Uh,
a wipe just to wipe my finger okay so when you're sitting back and you're looking at your picture and you're thinking how am I going to improve this this is looking amazing <laughs> If only that's how I thought about my own pictures. No, my, my mind's usually like, oh, you've done it again. You could have done much better than this. <laughs> and that's just the way it is. So, here we go. I've put some, uh, see this muddy, muddy, ready, blacky color just the colour that I used to mix when I was a beginner and I, I'd be like oh, I've done it again that mud's here again <laughs> but sometimes this muddy colour works nice it's just the colour you want to wiggle your tree out of look how much lighter this is maybe we will add some of this some little twigs and stuff break this horrendous <laughs> horrendous line I don't want that let's roll our brush give it a wiggle give it a wiggle this broken line I'm loving it I think uh, here's an interesting thought. <laughs> it's one of my interesting thoughts. The more paintings you do, the more confident you get with the brush, I guess. The more slack <laughs> you become. <laughs> I don't know if this is true for everybody. Maybe this is just me. Uh, the more paintings I've done and the more experience I've got and uh, the closer to a master I've... Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm only joking. Um, yeah, the more, more paintings I do, the... I don't know. I don't know what it is actually I just feel like I can be looser but still get something good get something um, hmm this is a hard one to explain there's a couple of hairs in there it's really annoying me okay got them yeah, what am I trying to say? Yeah, what I'm, you know, like the way I'm using this brush and I'm twisting it and I'm moving it. I wouldn't have done that as a beginner. I wouldn't have thought twist your bristles or just slapping paint on and spinning it and, and all this sort of stuff. I wouldn't have done it because you know, that's not, it's not what I perceived painting to be. Painting in my mind was very strict and uh, very line here, line there. I must get these lines right. I must get it to look exactly like what I see. Uh, I mustn't be loose. But sometimes this looseness, this... Uh, the ability to use quick strokes to create effects these things just 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 makes it better I don't, <laughs> I don't know what it is I don't think I can explain it to be honest I'm trying my best I can't quite work it out I can't put it to words 
I guess uh, <clears throat> the more paintings you do, the more experience you've got in what's going to happen. Maybe that's what it is. You know what's going to happen to the paint because you've done it a few times. So that means you're not as worried about throwing the paint down. Just chucking it on there and going, yeah, that's what I wanted. <laughs> that's what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to create. Sort of look. This. I'm gonna have to go to a smaller brush soon because I want to get some uh, smaller branches in there. We'll try and do a few like this. I don't really want this to be uh, flat, to be honest. So I'm going to put some splats in. What's the best way to put it? A splat. Just action in this black. Um, the brush strokes will take away the straightness of it. We don't want it to be straight. Even these little uh, effects could be anything, couldn't they? Could be little trees just poking over the hill, or but I'm just being a bit slapdash, creating action. Which again, this I would never have done this. I would be thinking, oh, this grass, the grass is flat, so I better do flat stuff. And I'd also be thinking, oh, well, this, this tree must be picking up a bit of light on here, and I'd put a highlight on. I'm not going to, because I want this to be dark. Right, just sitting back. And looking at the other picture and thinking, is mine okay? Does it represent that at least? Do I want to make it more like the picture, the original picture, or do I, am I okay carrying on and doing my own thing? around the little brush now. I want to... Uh, I'm going to do little strokes here. These little, little strokes. And the leaves. This tree hasn't got any leaves on, <laughs> as you can see. But we're not painting that tree anymore. We're doing our own thing. See, we can design things as we go, and we can do that because we've we've done it before in another picture, or we've seen it. We've been to a museum. <laughs> oh no, I'm giving away my secret now. <laughs> secret, going to the museums. Don't tell everybody. <laughs> now we all know, don't we? Go to the museums, have a look at what the masters are doing. Have a look on the internet, what the masters paint like. Get your ideas. It's 
steal some of their ideas. How do you think they learn? A lot of painters, a lot of the masters, they have favourite artists that they've followed and thought, oh yes, their pictures are amazing, I want to develop mine into something like that. And I have that kind of realism or impression or... Probably my biggest influence is uh, Vincent. Yeah, probably. Vincent Barnes. He lives down the road from me. I really like his pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, the, the the more famous uh, Vincent Van Gogh, Van Gogh, or however you say his name. I know it's different pronunciation. Yeah, his, his I just love his pictures. It's just the uh, the way he uses brush strokes. The way it. Um, the way when I went to see him in the museum in uh, London, and I was looking at how thick the paint was, how the directional strokes were so important, and but also how loose it was. I was thinking to myself as I was looking, how can I add that into my work? How can I use what I'm looking at in this museum? How can I benefit my own paintings from this sort of uh, skill level? And uh, ended up uh, copying a few uh, of Van Gogh's. And uh, that helps. And then uh, I've also copied a few other painters, pictures, famous artists. It's a good thing to do for practice. I quite like that tree there. I'm going to put one in there. have a look. See I quite like that. I, I don't feel like I want to do too much more. If I do more I'll probably ruin it. So I think over here, over here needs some. Because that doesn't look quite right to me there. It looks a bit boring. Okay, now I'll sit back again. What does it say to you? What does my mind say when I look at this now? Sunrise or sunset. Trees. Warmth. Motion. It's, it's you could see it's probably a bit windy. See the wind this way. So yeah, I think that's enough. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this uh, little picture. And I'll see you at another episode. Cheers, bye.